This is a video from the angry photographer here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about this lens here y'all been wanting to know about. Mm -hmm. It's more expensive than 10 truckloads full of fried taters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's damn expensive. Now y'all been wanting me to do a, a video review on this lens here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I... I told you it was coming, and here it is. Now, I'm going to do a two-part video on this lens here. Mm -hmm. The next video, right after this, and I'm going to be giving you image samples between uh, this here 135mm Nikkor F2 DC lens and the lens I've been recommending to you all out there for so long. The Nikkor AI 135mm f2.8 Right here, this lens yours $1,300 Land of Goshen mm -hmm. And the, the 135-2.8 lens Why that one Still I started talking about it You know, it's been selling for about a $120 Mm-hmm Mm -hmm. <laughs> you crazy fucking asshole. <laughs> oh my god! This guy's crazy, honey. I don't like his videos. His recommendations are accurate, but he's weird. <gasps> oh my god, I know! My boyfriend's gonna love this video! Hey! <laughs> I've had too much caffeine. <laughs> anyway, I told you I'll be doing this review. Uh, 135 DC. Nikkor F2, $1,300. Both of them, including the one I've been recommending for so long, has a built-in lens hood right here. All metal, all Japanese construction. Now, it does have a nine-bladed aperture. It has a total of seven glass elements. The 135-28 has five glass elements. Now, the 135 3.5 has um, four glass elements. Of course, we're talking about $120 usually. At least it has been for many years versus currently $1,300. So we're basically talking um, $130 versus um, $1,300 right there. Yes, sir, -y, boy. And she's a fragile little bitch. You drop her, you're gonna break that bitch right in two. Just like, uh, like a fat man fucking Paris Hilton. You're gonna fuck that thing up and you're gonna break it right in half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think you can see the nine bladed aperture. If I actually get the light right, you can see it. It's a nine bladed aperture. Um, now when I did the test shot, you're, you're thinking, Oh, you got a filter on both of those? You can't take test shot. I took the filter off, okay? God damn it. All right. Um, 135 uh, DC new core. Is it worth it? I know you want me to get to that. It's like, get to the point. Have a manual and an autofocus ring. Does have adjustable aperture. Is an F2, whereas the, you can get an F2 in the 135 millimeter. It is available at f2, f2.8, um, and uh, f3.5. Okay, both have built-in lens filters. This is a real heavy bitch. Um, Nikon is probably going to discontinue this soon. Now you're thinking to me, well, this lens here has a defocus control, and it gives you that serious bokeh that this lens over here don't give you. Mm -hmm. Well... The defocus image control, which is technically not defocus, it is just about image control. You press the ring in for rear defocusing. You have your aperture set back here, either manual or automatic remote. You set your defocus to the correct aperture for rear defocusing. It's basically bokeh control. Now, there's nobody else that produces this. Well, why not? That don't make no sense. Because Nikon has this technology patented. Not the 135, but the DIC, the defocus image control, which is basically a shit translation from the Japanese. It is about image focus control. Now, it has two advantages, which are very, very subtle. 
Nine bladed aperture means you get bright little round holes if you have an image speculation in your background and you're defocusing on a wedding shot or a portrait. It's obviously a buttery portrait lens. Now, unfortunately, right now I'm going to have to attack Ken Rockwell. Ken Rockwell in his site says, Ah, oh, the 135 DC Nikkor is much sharper than the older AI 130. Bullshit! You fucking cocksocket. You were wrong. That's not the case. You're going to have to watch the second part of this video to see them image samples. Now, the second part of this video, I'm obviously going to be comparing the two, but it's just going to be down the link. And a quick point out on the two lenses. So watch the second part because a lot of you people have been begging me to... Uh, Talk about the 135DC. Everybody said, well, you keep recommending this lens, and you know, everybody's buying it, and they're really happy, but how does it compare to, you know, the Super Monster? Everybody agrees. They said, well, the 135F2 is the holy grail of, uh, of, uh, oh, oh, we got to put it on a pedestal. Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Lay off with the bullshit, right? Um, not anywhere near as spectacular as you think. I am not a gear whore. I am here to save you money! Arr! Arr! Not to tell you... Well, Fro knows that this lens is expensive and therefore it's the best and it has... Shut the fuck up, you fuck nugget. You cocksocket, you inbred, syphletic, brain-dead, mental midget. You freaking winking asshole bastard since uh, you got a lot of friends that are Russian I want you to translate this from Russian about yourself give it to them if you don't speak Russian if you translate that from Russian, ooh, you won't like what I just said about you, boy. Well, this is more expensive. It's got to be better. Shazam! No, folks, it ain't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for $130, $120 bucks right here, versus $1,300, there ain't one cunt air difference between the two. <laughs> now you're saying... Well, yes, there is. My boyfriend said that it has bokeh control. And yes, it does look right. It is actually very, very subtle. If you think that this thing is going to magically uh, shoot rainbows out of your uh, ass and your lens due to the uh, DIC, the uh, image focus control for uh, defocusing your images. Now, it does have a nine-bladed aperture, which is nice, which uh, means you get nice, creamy, soft round holes versus octagonal ones depending on the blade of the aperture and um, it is an f2 so frigging what if you think you really need an f2 versus an f2.8 in uh, portraiture then you're an idiot this is ultimately a house cat lens it's for your studio obviously there's nothing wrong with taking this on location it's built like a tank but compared to this she's a fragile little hooker She's an 80 pound anorexic chick with osteoporosis. Um, you better damn well have it insured before leaving the house with it. Um, so, I know so many people say, when are you going to get to the 135? Well, here we are. And video two, take a look at video two. We're going to do a quick, quick uh, peep on that. And you'll have four images to download, and uh, then you'll see. Um, obviously on these older lenses there is a slight magenta difference, but obviously taking care of that. In Photoshop is no issue. The only other issue, and it's not an issue at all, is... Now, I shot both of these on the D810 in the second series of uh, videos. At the maximum raw, converted to JPEG. Um, the only other thing is that typically on a lot of the prime AI lenses, even doesn't matter what body you have, you're going to have to throw in a half a stop or three quarters of a stop additional exposure compensation in flash or an exposure compensation one or the other or a half combination of both and that's no big deal at all there's a slight magenta shift on most or a lot of the uh, AIs and taking care of that in post obviously you know takes a half a millisecond 
you know, you're going to have to do that regardless what lens it is. Not magenta necessarily, but to, you know, adjust your image perfectly. That's no big deal at all, so that's nothing to worry about. So, what can I say? This is the uh, video review about the ever-coveted, you know, God lens, the uh, 135 uh, DC Nikkor D $1,300 lens. Um, I can't say that I've used this lens a tremendous amount. I have her insured. She is fragile. I've used it quite a bit. I mean, maybe I've got, I don't know, 10,000 or more shots on her. I mean, I take pristine care of her. I have a filter on her. As I told you in the test shots, I took the filters off of both of them. Okay, okay, okay. So don't let me there. Like, well, you gotta take the filter off the lens, and it's not a real test if you didn't take the filter. Well, I took the filters off the lens, okay? Um, so, can I recommend this $1,300 beauty over the 135mm AR, I mean AI? And there's a caveat to that. The answer is uh, slightly yes and 80% no. Okay, why is the 20% yes from? 20% yes is if you have a studio or you can write this off on your taxes, um, you know, you have a business and... So many people say, well, I need a lens to, you know, shoot sceneries or something, or shoot architecture, or... I have a studio, I can write this lens off. You know, obviously it has autofocus, the AI does not, but if you're a lazy douche, you don't know how to autofocus, you know, that's that's your problem. You need to start, slow down on portraits and uh, be doing manual focus anyway. I mean, it's not like you're shooting race cars going around a track, okay? Manual focus it, you got an issue, fine, you get the autofocus 135. Um... For essentially $1,200 difference more, what you are getting is, you know, f2 versus f2.8, which is nothing. You are getting something that is extremely subtle on a Nikon's uh, patented uh, uh, image defocusing. It's not defocusing, it's focus control. Uh, you're getting a nine bladed aperture. What you will get, and it is subtle, as I said, maximum like if you have like a lot of water speculation behind a, a person a portrait say you have a lake behind them you know you'll have these nice creamy blurry perfectly round dots behind them versus the 2.8 which will look basically 85 percent the same it is subtle okay if you think this lens does this uh, secondary ring up here which is patented by nikon that this does something magic and you know rainbows uh, shoot from hence the lens onto your image sensor, you know, then you're deluded. You will be spending $1,300 for something that you think is there, but is not there. So I have to make this review for two different types of people. If you need the autofocus, and uh, you know, you're shooting tons and tons of portraits, and you can write this off as a business expense as a pro shooter, um, then you know, $1,200 is chump change, you know, it's dick, it's jack shit. You know, ultimately, most pros only have a dozen or less lenses, and if you're occupying yourself with some serious money, and you know, you're you're shooting some weddings, you know, and the bucks are rolling in here and there, it doesn't have to be full time, then you could justify it. And like I say, get the lens. So I'm not saying, you know, this lens sucks because it's $135 and, uh, you know, this one's 120 bucks. So I'm not saying that, but I am giving a caveat for the amateur, the advanced amateur. No fucking way. What I recommend the 135 DC Nikkor to you, and I am not a whore out to pimp shit to you, like uh, uh, you know the unnamed person that I just cussed out in Russian about five minutes ago. So, <coughs> to that guy, you know I'm not being sponsored by anybody. I want you to have the best shit. And, uh, you know, you buy this lens, you've got $1,200 left over for, say, a second body. $1,200 left over will buy you a second body and, second used body, and two or three or four lenses. Okay? So please, don't fall into the bullshit you see in the photography magazines about this lens. And Ken Rockwell, you know, you're a decent guy. You do say a lot of goofy, stupid shit, but fuck you, you fuck nugget, for saying that... He said, well, this lens is so much sharper and superior to those older AI lenses. <laughs> bullshit! Absolute bullshit. I call bullshit on you, you cocksocket.
I'm drinking coffee, by the way. Don't want you to think I'm drinking behind the lens. Well, he's drinking back there. I can't trust nothing. He says. I don't drink. I don't even like alcohol. <laughs> Been drunk twice my entire life. Both times were in college. Never do it again. My mind's all I got left. I'm a tattooed freak of nature. But I've got my mind, and it works extremely well. Not ready to fuck that up at any point in time soon. So, that is the crazy video review of the 135mm DC Nikkor. Because, you know, this lens is nice. But, you know, shit, she's more expensive than 10 truckloads of fried taters. <laughs> <laughs> so... I give a 20% caveat that this lens is worth buying conditionally. We have to talk about justification versus rationalization. If you're a wedding shooter, the bucks are rolling in, even part-time, then you can justify it. There's uh, lots of magazines out there that brainwash you into buying this shit, and that is a pathetic rationalization. They don't make any money off recommending shit like this that isn't made anymore. And when you see video number two here, with the test shot so you can download, I'm going to give you a secret insight into, into the test shots. Guess which of these lenses is sharper? Guess which one? Shot on the D810 33.6 megapixel sensor. Both of these lenses. Which one of these lenses is sharper? That's right. What? It's not possible. Uh, yeah, it is. Ever so very slightly possible. And I did multiple test shots to confirm this to make sure that it wasn't an autofocus issue versus a manual issue. You know, I did multiple shots and I took the best example about, don't say, well, you know, you could have had it slightly out of focus and that's why this one came up a little bit sharper. No. I eliminated that variable. Okay? So, watch video number two, which is kind of basically just the ass end of uh, this video. So now you've got your lens review. A 20% caveat of buying it only if it can be justified from your work as a studio shooter or tons of portrait work or if you have money, you know, you have money flying out of your asshole, go ahead and buy it. Or if you could justify it as a wedding shooter or write it off on your taxes, fine, write it, buy it. 80% um, absolutely no. Now, so far as the amateur or advanced amateur, I give it basically 95% no. And the lens that I told you was the fucking cat's ass is, of course, still the fucking cat's ass. Because the angry photographer is trying to save you money. Yeah! He's not trying to fucking screw you over and get corporate sponsorships or bucks by selling you shit that's expensive rather than this old shit that isn't made anymore. Right? Got it. I'm glad I can save you a buck and give you some accurate information and help you make a decision. It's all about having tons of information and uh, making the correct choice. Was this video a little too long? Yeah, well, excuse me. Alright, sometimes I flap my lips too much. Whatever. At least I got the information out there. There's this little button on YouTube that says, Fast forward! Fast forward! Okay, if you like this video, you, know, you can send me a buck or two, or you can tell me to go fuck myself, or go jump off the cliff. Whatever makes you the most happy. And uh, check out uh, part number two. This is part number one. Check out part number two of this video, and uh, I will have the download samples for you there. Right? Get it, got it, good. Yeah! Ovidium, sir, as 